Hey folks, welcome back. Well, on these 7.3 engines, um, I made a video uh, just a couple days ago about uh, all the differences you're going to find, uh, whether, you know, which engine you want to, you know, swap into, because basically what we've got here is a uh, 99 F350, and then we're taking a 1995 7.3 from a uh, E350 automatic, this one's a manual. I identified all the differences I could uh, point out and everything like that. And this video is uh, something that I missed that uh, you'll probably run into just like I did. And it has to do with these uh, intake, where the intake plenums go. Okay, so this engine block here is the uh, 1995 E350. And there's a couple other differences I'm also gonna gonna go over uh, that I kind of didn't in the last video as, as well. This is the main focus here. Um, but like I said, the block here, 1995 E350. Um, here is a plenum off the uh, 1999. And what we got a difference of here is there's only eight bolts that hold the plenum on for the 1995 versus 10 bolts for the uh, 99. And I don't know when, what year they changed this. If you look and, and you find these to buy some actually say from 96 to 03, um, some of them, you know, say from 1994 and a half all the way to 03, I'll explain a little bit about what, uh, how that could possibly work. Um, but you are going to run in, you know, this, this, you're going to run into this, uh, possibly, you know, if you're using, um, an older engine like we've got, um, here's the intake plenums, you know, from this engine from the 1995, uh, these are, are way too small to use. Um, so we can't use these when using our turbo system with the intercooler and all that stuff as this pickup had it in the beginning. Um, these will match up with all the bolt holes, but you don't want to use these, in my opinion, um, because if you do line them up, this part right here, you can see how it's just barely doesn't make it. So if we really center this hole right here, that's a potential place. You got a place right here. You know, you can see the crack there. You just have to get that no matter which way you do it. That is just too narrow um, for that to work. Uh, one way to get around it is you could order, you know, something like this, which is what I'm going to do. And I've, I've put these on. Um, my pickup and a couple of others um you know they're cheap they're just a uh, uh and you know the thing is is this is just completely flat you can see that this has 10 bolts but all the bolts holes line up except for these two right here and um but you know that's not a big deal because this is wide enough that you know these are put on with uh, silicone that uh yeah you'll have a little bit of silicone come up out of the hole or whatever but i mean big deal that's not a not a big issue that's pretty much the gonna be the workaround that i'm gonna end up doing um you know to get around this particular deal like i said i've used these before i know they don't have the you know like you've got ones that are way more expensive you know that uh have this part that's angled i might be able to find one of those you know, something like this, see how it's it's angled and these are considered, you know, like the, the high flow and, um, you know, like this particular uh, setup is not gonna be built in anything with um, uh, high boost pressure or anything like that. Um, but, you know, you're talking about price difference. I mean, look at the price difference. So, you know, if you're going for performance, yeah, I'd get something like this. Or something like this from Riff Raff. Um, I think these actually have a O-ring on it, you know, that rubber O-ring to, to seal those up, you know. But, I mean, we're talking about, you know, another big price difference. But if you're building your engine to uh, 
performance wise, you should be spending good money on, you know, money to, to, to get some good stuff on here. Ours is just running and we'll be able to be just fine with, with, uh, <clears throat> you know, these ones I have had here. And like I said, a year ago, I put these on, um, my own pickup and everything is just plain stock. I, I do have a, a chip tuner, which, you know, I don't know, add like 50 horse or something like that, but it's not much. And, and, uh, I've had no issues at all and everything's been fine. And that's the route we're going to go with on this one. Yeah. So anyways, there's, you know, now I'm going to talk about a couple of other differences, um, that I didn't include in that other video as far as the differences between the uh, automatic versus the manual. Um, so if you come down here, you know, this particular automatic engine, you know, has the spacer plate. We talked about that in the other video and, and everything, and we showed you what the manual spacer plate is here. Uh, but the one thing you're going to, you know, run into is, is these dowel pins are going to be longer on this one here for the automatic, whereas this one that came out... For the manual only has these dowel pins uh, looks like about three eighths uh, a little more than three eighths of an inch a little less than the width of my finger here so on this engine we'd have to do one of two things we either cut those dowel pins down or you know remove them and switch them over um, because like i said this this is the plate right here for the manual transmission that'll go on over here and then you know, you'll, you'll want the dowel pins to, to help, uh, with aligning the transmission up, you know? And so if you're going the other direction or something like that, and you go to put that thick spacer plate on right here, well, obviously that dowel pin, you know, that'll still work. You just won't have the dowel pin to help you line up the transmission, whether or not you can get by without. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. I would, you know, if, it, if this engine was going into, uh, an automatic, or, or get an automatic transmission mounted up to it, probably just go ahead and remove these uh, dowel pins and um, get some longer ones to uh, go back in there. And I would say that these, these dowel pins look like they're about inch and three quarters, maybe two inch, I don't know. Um, so just what's exposed from the block where the end of the tape measure is, that's like about an inch and uh, an inch and five eighths. Yeah, inch and five eighths. I don't know how far in here they go, you know, but if you're looking into that, I'd just pull these out. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna cut them down. I'm just gonna cut them down to the, the same length here. And, um, you know, We'll get some other dowel pins later on. I might investigate getting these out because this engine's going to eventually go uh, into an older vehicle, and we are going to put a made an automatic transmission up to it um, when we get this engine rebuilt. But I um, wanted to point that out. Uh, the other other thing, too, difference wise that you're going to run into between automatic and manual, and I really don't know everything about this. Um, but here's the front cover, you know, from the 95. We went through in the other video and we talked about all the differences between your high pressure oil pump and all that stuff and how this stuff all needs to, to be the same of which uh, system you're running. So if you're running the 1995 high pressure oil pump, whatever, you need to stick with the front cover that would go for a 1995. Um, but here you've got this front cover here with this uh, temperature sensor of some kind. Uh, this is only for uh, the automatics. Whereas the manual for, or the, the front cover for the manual just has a plug in here. Why they have that temp particular uh, temperature sensor on there, I, I don't know. But it's there, it's not a huge deal, but you can remove the plug. But like I said, we talked about in the last video all the differences between the two high pressure oil pumps um, for the older ones. And the difference is there. Uh, I just wouldn't interchange them. Uh, so like I said, this particular uh, front cover is from this 90, 1995 engine block here. But it is not going into that 99 pickup. So we're going to use the front cover that's up there, get it cleaned up. That is from this engine block. But it's going to go on this, this engine block here. 
Um, anyways, that's what I run into. It's differences I wish I would have put in the other video, but I didn't know. Um, didn't realize it and all that kind of stuff. So we're doing it now, and hopefully that helps you out. And thanks for watching.